Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rustin Leno. It's my pleasure to once again introduce uh, Ron Ramon Abrial for our uh, uh, next lecture on the event B method. And today we're going to hear more about sequential programs. Thank you, Rustin, and good morning. So last time we stopped um, before the um, sorting development. Oops, yeah. This one. Yeah, the, so I'm going to present a, a sorting algorithm which is not particularly clever, like quick sort or heap sort or other kind of, um, of sorting algorithm. My intention here is to show you an example where we have nested loops. So this is um, what we are going to present here and, and show how uh, when we have nested loop, the, the business of uh, merging events when they are all flat on the table is, um, is an easy task. So we, we start with a numerical array F um, and we want to build another numerical array G and G and F have, have the same element and uh, G is a sorted uh, in ascending order. Okay, so here is an example. We have, we have the initial array F and we have the final array um, G. So we start as usual by defining um, our axioms where we present uh, the parameters. N is a natural number. Zero is uh, smaller than, um, is, is, um, uh, N is positive. And um, f is, um, is a function from, from the interval 1n to the natural number. I have decided to take a, an injective function here to simplify things. So all elements are, are distinct in, in this array. And uh, at this point, for, for g, it's just a binary relation between um, natural numbers. And, um, and here is the, you remember, we, have, we define the final, which is an event with a, with a post condition and, um, and an empty, um, an empty um, action. So OG is, um, is um, a natural, um, an, an array from 1 to n. The range are the same. Uh, and here is the way I define uh, the, the ascending order for i in 1 and n minus 1, uh, j in i plus 1 n, um, g i is smaller than g j. And, uh, and we have, as usual, an anticipated event progress, which um, just say that uh, G is, is a binary relation between N and N. Okay? So, the first so this, was the, the, this was the initial model. Um, and the first, for the first refinement, um, it's very simple. We suppose we introduce a, a variable K, and um, we suppose that um, uh, the, the, the array is sorted from 1 to k minus 1, and all elements in the first part from 1 to k minus 1 are smaller than the, uh, than the remaining element here in kn. But these elements are not uh, sorted yet. Um, and as usual, we are going to, to make some progress. We are going to move our k to um, our k plus 1. So we are going to move the, the border here one step further. And um, here, here are the invariant I've just said. G is, is now a <coughs> an injective function. The range are the same. Um, OK is in 1n. And here, it's, this is exactly what I've said here in, in this diagram. Um, <coughs> for all i in, a, in 1 to k minus 1 and j in i plus 1n, g i is smaller than g j. So th this means that this is sorted until until uh, k minus 1, and then all the elements from 1 to k minus 1 are smaller than the ele re remaining elements. And we introduce an anticipated variable, anticipating variable L at this point. 
So let me just give a, a, little, a, little, a little animation. So here is the initial one. And we figure out that one is the minimum of, um, of, 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 of all these sets. So we, we exchange one and three. And then two is the minimum of, um, of this one, of the black ones. Um, then we change, we change seven and two. And then three is, is a minimum of seven to, to, to there, etc. So we move, we move, we move, and this is it. OK, so we see, we see that we have one loop, which, which, which corresponds to k um, increasing from, from 1 to, to n. And, um, and, and we have something else, which is um, uh, determining the, the minimum of, of the black part. So here is uh, the new, um, is a new um, model. When k is equal to n, uh, then we are, we are done. And here, this is, this is the progress. Um, <clears throat> we have a non-deterministic introduction of L, such that G of L is a minimum of the remaining part. And, um, and here we have the exchange, or okay, KK plus 1. And here, this anticipating variable is just any numbers. And we have PROG, which is the second anticipating uh, events, uh, with L uh, taking any, any value. So the next step now, of course, is to, is to compute G of L, the, mi the minimum. And so <coughs> we introduce a second variable, J, which goes from K to N. And, and, and we have a loop here to determine what is the minimum uh, between, um, uh, between K and N. And then we'll, we, we will do the switch. So the current situation, G of L, is the minimum of, of G um, from K to J, from K to J here. And then we, have, we are going to have J progressing each step. So <coughs> uh, this is now the, uh, the new invariant with the definition of, of J and L and the, the, the invariant concerning G of L. And, and that now we have the, the, the sorting. Let me show you that to you. So we have three. And then we progress here, determining the um, two is, is a candidate for being the minimum, but we don't know yet. So we go further, further, further. Ah, we find that one is, is the one. Then we change one and three. And then we do the loop again. Two is a candidate. It's a good candidate. Then we change two and seven. Then we go further. Three is, is um, the minimum. Five, four is the minimum. We change eight, nine, five, seven, five. So we change five and eight. And then nine, eight, seven, seven and nine. Eight, nine, so eight is the minimum. And then this is the end of it. Okay? So we, we see that we have, we have now these um, uh, two loops. So <clears throat> here is the... Um, initialization of, of the values of, of the variable. Um, J, J is F and K at G and L are all, all one. Here, this is the, the, the progress. So we do this as we've do, done before. And then we assign the, the, the K, J, and L to K plus one, all, all of them to K plus one. And then we have um, two, uh, two events. Um, which are refinement of the anticipating, uh, anticipating event PROG, so PROG1 and PROG2. And uh, we just check if G of L is smaller than or equal to G, of L, G, G plus 1, then G, G of L remains the minimum. Otherwise, um, we change the value of L to G plus 1. And we have also a, a variant. You remember, we had also a variant in the first case. So we have a variant for the inner loop, which is not yet the inner loop, of course. And we have a variant for the outer loop. And this variant, again and again, corresponds to the fact that we have new events here, and new events cannot take control forever. OK, so we are now ready to, or let me move to, I've done a few more slides this morning, um, because it, it was going a bit too fast. So here is the final situation. In it, final progress, PROG1 and PROG2. 
So PROG1 and PROG2 are at the same level. Then uh, PROGRESS is one level up PROG, uh, PROG1 and PROG2, and FINAL is the, the first level. Okay? So now you remember uh, about this problem of level. So because PROG1 and PROG2 are at the same level, we can do uh, an if then else. We have some common uh, guards here, but we have here two guards that are complement of each other. So we could, we could define now a PROG1-2, which is this one, okay? Um, which, um, which is exactly the putting together, well, it's a putting together of, of these two. Uh, and so we, we have a sort of a funny event here, which is half an event and half a, um, um, a program here, and we still have these two guards. And now we are going to continue. We are going to put together a progress with PROG1-2. Now PROG1-2, um, uh, we put together two programs, two, two events that were at a certain level, level three. Okay, and now we compare this with this one, which was at level two. So we can now merge these two and, and form a loop. And, and remember, we have proved that these two statements, these two actions here, decrease a certain variant, which was n minus j. So, so putting this together, we have a loop. When, and and you, you, you see here, j is um, uh, smaller than n. Uh, um, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Th this is common. This, this guard here, here is common, still in the when. And here we have j equal to n and j, and j different from n. So we have a while loop here, and we put this at the end of it um, after the semicolon. Either we loop on this while j is not equal to n, or when it is finished, we just do this. Okay, so it's, it's completely uh, natural. Okay, you got it? So now the next step is easy. We are going to put together final which is the little thing here, and progress one, two, and prog one, two progress, okay? And we will see here k is different from n, and here k is, is equal to n, so we put them together, and we have um, an outer loop uh, which corresponds to this while here. So we, we loop here, and then when it's finished, we, we, uh, but we do not have to add anything because this is skip here, so we do not have to add a, um, a semicolon, something else. And the final step now is to, is to add the um, init uh, on top of it, and here we have the sorting program. Okay? Could you say again, where was J introduced? It was introduced when you refined the progress um, action, is that right? Or was it introduced before? No, J, J was introduced to, to, to determine the minimum. Right. So, when, when was the variable J introduced? Oh, the variable J was introduced at that, at that, at that, at that level. Uh -huh. right. okay. So when you refine the, the, the progress event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you, see, you see what we have done with the event B here is we, we use event B as a proving machine. So we, we prove the thing and, and then the construction of the program is, is just completely straightforward. It can, be, it can be done by a tool which works on a syntactic level only. Okay, but it's purely syntactic, okay? Fine? Question? Um, how do you determine which order to compose programs? I know you, you had the while loop and then you had the, the remaining stuff after it and you put them together with the, the stuff coming after it. Do, is there any, any reason? Well, we, we, are, we, are, we are directed by, by the guards. You see, here, here this, is the, this is the first level, okay? We have all these guards, so we, we have all these guards in common here, and here we have two complementary guards. And PROG1 and PROG2 are the same level, so they are good candidates to... So we don't know exactly where we go, you see. We, we, we do things naturally. So these, these two are candidates to, f to form um, um, an ifs and else, because they are at the same level. Okay? And, and now we, s we look at, at the guard here, and, and now we, what is the, the, the situation? We have, we have uh, this one and we have this one. We also have, um, we also have a, 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 pro, a final here, but, but we look at the guard and we have the guard here, which is the same, and we have these two complementary guards. So we are, we are naturally... Okay, so this isn't necessarily something that can be automated. 
it still requires a human to sort of figure out which. Yeah, it could, it could be probably automated. Yeah, yeah. Um, the nice thing is is um, is it it might be possible sometimes to find out that that things could be done in parallel, uh, not in this example, but um, but it 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 might be possible. Um, um, and yeah, even 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 this could be could be automatized uh, um, uh, in some cases. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. But do we need more rules? Then? We need probably more rules. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So so far for 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 this one. So let's go back. Um, let's go back here. So you see, I've added this morning these guards because then I, w I went directly here. So <laughs> it was a bit too much. But you could recognize you could recognize the init, prog one and prog two, and then progress here. Okay. Uh, it requires this number of proof. I've, I've not been looking rec recently at these at these things. And seven were interactive. I hope I have less interactive now. <laughs> okay. So let me now go to another example. And this is the last example with array. And after that, we'll go on example with pointer. Um, in place reversing of an array. So we have a carrier set S. We have two constant, as usual. We have an array here. And we want to build another array such that um, the, the, the other array is just e equal to the same in the other um, reverse order. So, so um, so we have uh, we have here this this array, and here this is the array in the reverse order. And here we have five and five. And if the if the index of five is i, then uh, because we have eight elements, then uh, the index of five in the reverse array is eight minus i plus one. Okay, so we have to we have to change things like this. Okay, so it's not a very complicated program. So. Final here is um, just um, the, the, the precondition. Uh, for all k, um, k is in one n, g of k is f of n minus k plus one. And we have the usual anticipated, and the, the final has got skip. And, and here, I always, you see, I always do some, some diagram to show exactly what I'm going to do. Um, here, we suppose that the, from, from I introduce i and j, two variables that are both in one end. And um, initially, i is 1 and j is n. So i is here and j is here. And uh, um, this part is reverse, this part is reverse, and this part is unchanged. And what we are going to do is very simple. We are going to do this precisely. Uh, <coughs> and um, so here are the... the, the um, elements um, of the invariant, the def definition of j, definition of i and j. And i and j have certain relation. i plus j is n plus 1. n plus 1, initially 1 n, so n plus 1. And then one, this one is moving one, one step up, and this one's one step down. So their sum remains the same, of course. So i plus j is n plus 1. And in fact, we will be finished either if we have a, a um, um, a pair, a pair um, um, odd numbers. They go like this, or the same, the same number uh, in n for n. Then they just go like this. So we have i is smaller than or equal to j plus one. This is always a trick when you have two indices. Indexes, um, you have to be careful uh, at the end. Either they touch each other or they are just like this, depending on the parity of n. And, and here is the, the refinement. So um, uh, this is what I've said before. So uh, this is um, inverted in the first part, inverted in the second part, and the same in, and the, same in the middle. OK? So the, the actions is quite simple. <coughs> uh, progress is just switching the two, and then um, increasing and decreasing the value of i and j. And final, when j is smaller than or equal to i. And the, and the variant, of course, is j minus y, i. And, and the final program is just now very, uh, very simple. It's just this. The reason why I show um, this um, reversing of an array 
is that now we are going to do the same, but not with an array, with pointers. So we, we, we'll have a, a, a link um, of, of pointers, and we will do exactly the same, reversing completely the, the thing. So it's, not, it's, it's rather different because we have no indices in, anymore. We have just things pointing to each other. So <clears throat> we want to reverse a linear chain, and a linear chain is made of nodes, and the nodes are pointed to each other by means of pointers. And to simplify, the nodes have no information field. We are just interested in, in, in the pointing. So this is very simple. Here is a linear, ch linear chain. Uh, to simplify, I have the first node is, is called F, and the second node is called L. And I suppose that they are distinct. Well, this is just to simplify things. So at least we have two elements in, in, in the chain. Um, <clears throat> And the nodes of the, of the chain are taken in a set, um, in a set S. Okay. So I have to formalize this and to formalize what it means to reverse this, this chain. So let me do, let me do this. Um, <coughs> I have um, oh, D, D is the elements that are in the chain. F is in D, L is in D, F is different from L. And here I have something which seems to be a bit complicated. Um, we, have to, we are going to define C, which is the, the, the function corresponding to the pointing. And this is a bijection between this, um, the two set D minus L and D minus F. So we go from, from here, we go, we go from, from here to here. And this is a, this is a bijection from D minus um, from, from D minus L, yeah, from D minus L, so from this set to this set, to D minus F. And so it's a bijection, and it's written like this, it's, it's an injection, and it, it is a surjection. So, so all, all the elements are, are taken in the range. And now I have this strange thing here, which express that it is a finite li linear chain. So let me let me do an aside here, and um, um, uh, I take some, some slide from uh, um, a, a, a talk I, I did some time ago about doing mathematics with the Rodin platform. And um, I, I studied various things like the when founded set and relation, fixed point and recursion, transitive closure, graph and trees. And what I want to express here is this notion of well-founded set and well-founded um, uh, relation. So, so um, and, and then that will explain exactly what we do for the linear chain, which is a special case of a well-founded relations. So a motivation for a well-founded set and relation, this, the, this mathematical structure formalizes the notion of reachability. Things are reachable and, and a discrete transition which either terminates or eventually reach certain states. It formalizes well-founded traces. And here is, is a well-founded relation. So you have a, you have a relation. It, it, goes, it, it, it goes into the infinity in this direction. But when we go in the other direction, uh, at any node, there is only a um, finite pass to this, to this, red, um, to this red node. Okay, so this is the definition, informal definition of, um, of well-founded. So we can see this. So we have a pass here and the pass is, is finite. From any point here, when we go down, the pass is, is finite. It's not the same in the other direction, it could be infinite. But we, we, we can have, of course, um, a well-founded relation in both directions. Uh, <coughs> um, but, but here, this is the most general one. So we want to, to, we want to formalize this. So for many points in the graph, you can, you can always reach a red point after a finite travel. Okay, that's the idea of well foundation. And it's absolutely fundamental in force. So a relation which is not well founded, so when, when there is no red point, let me just describe, it's, it could be either a cycle, something like this, Okay, so we have no, we have no red, red point because we, we could go forever. Or like this, an infinite chain. Uh, psh, we can go forever um, uh, at infinity. 
So these are the two pathologies. These are the two cases where things could not be defined as well-founded. So set, let, let P containing a, cyc a cycle or an infinite chain. I want to formalize the reverse notion, so the notion of cycle or infinite chain. So let P be, be a set. And um, let, let take a, a point X. And here I write in, in, in English, and here I, I write in mathematics. For all X in P, for all X in P, there exists a Y in P. There exists a Y in P, such that P is related, um, uh, uh, in, related to X by relation R. So, so you go, you take up any point in P, and you, for any point in P, you can find another point in P where you have this. Okay. Therefore, Y is, already, is still in P. Therefore, you can find another one, you can find another one, etc. So we have either a, a cycle, um, we can go back here, or we can have a, an infinite chain that goes forever, like this. So this is the definition of, um, of a chain, of, of uh, either infinite chain or cycles. Your definition also says that there's nothing else in it. Sorry? Your definition also says that there's nothing else in it. Oh, well, there might be something else. It doesn't matter. Okay. No, for, for, no but for all x in p, we have, we have this. Okay. But if you just had, if x was just one red dot. Ah, if x, yeah, that, then it is well founded, of course. Uh, well, you, you, could have, you could have, say, an infinite chain and like a small finite set, yeah. right? Yeah. But that wouldn't be a cycle or infinite chain according to your definition, but it still wouldn't be well found. Here, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just defining the, uh, the definition of a set P containing a cycle or an infinite chain. I'm not well founded here. So, right, but it contains a cycle or an infinite chain, but it yeah. could also contain um, paths that are finite. Yeah, yeah. But your mathematics and English would not allow that. Um, well, let me, let me continue, and, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Okay. So, so now I, I can define, I can, I can simplify this, this predicate calculus statement here by P. P is included into R minus 1 of P, so the inverse image of P under, under R. Okay? So this corresponds, for, for, uh, this corresponds to this. So now... Definition of well-founded relation. A well-founded relation does not contain such a set P. Okay, does not contain such a set P. So in this set P, I've said all the points have these properties. Okay, now a well-founded relation does not contain such a set P unless it is the empty set because the empty set, clearly the empty set obeys, obeys this. Okay, when P is empty, um, P is, the empty set is certainly included into, into this. So, a well-founded relation does not contain such a set P unless it is the empty set. Therefore, this is the definition of the well-founded. For all P, for all P, for all sets, okay, if P is included in R minus 1 of P, then P is empty. So, this is the definition of well-founded set. Okay, you agree now? Agree with you, that. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fine. And so, here... Um, can I write somewhere? Oh yeah, here. So here we, we have defined we have defined this for um, any well-founded, and now a special case of a well-founded set is a tree. So a tree is something like this, and we have we have here a parent function for each node. We go we go to the to the parent function. And, and moreover, um, moreover um, if, we, if we take any, any node, there is a finite path to the top. And this is here, this is here the top. So you see, um, a, a, um, a, a tree could be defined with, with the function on a set, a tree on a set S could be defined by the, the function P going from S to S. 
uh, partially because this one um, there is not on top, and and then we apply we we, we give this as the um, additional condition. Now, if we take a special case of a tree, which is a uh, which is a linear list. Now we come to the linear list, and the linear list is a special case of tree where we have only where we are just just like this. Okay, it could be it could go for forever in this direction, but uh, but we have this. So here for a, a linear tree. For a linear tree, we go. Uh, uh, we have p that goes from s injectively to to s. So we see the di the difference. A well-founded relation is in general a binary relation. Then for a tree, we have a function, and for a list, we have a an injective function. So we we go we go down 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 to this. And what you're calling p on the board is called r on the slide. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so now we can go back to, to, our, to our problem. Um, and we see the, the um, here, because this is, moreover, this is a finite list here. So it, it's, it's, well, it's well founded in both directions. OK? And um, so that's the reason why we have here something more, something more. When we are now um, not an infinite list, linear list, but a finite one, then we have something like this. And, and then we have, and we have C, not C minus 1, because we, we, go, um, at, uh, we, we go the reverse direction. So this is the definition of a linear list. Okay. So, so you see, it's, it's a little more complicated than, than an array. But in fact, in an array, things are completely implicit, because this is the definition the, the very rich definition of the natural number that gives us exactly the same, the same thing. When you have the natural number, in fact, you have an infinite list. 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And when we go up um, by, by using the, the pred function, we, 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 are, we have exactly this property. Okay? So th this is the reason why um, there is a strong relation between... Um, between a, a list, a linear list with pointers, and an array. Uh, because again, again, for the array, the structure is hidden inside the natural numbers. OK? So now the, um, the definition of the, um, of, of the thing is extremely simple. Uh, R is equal to C minus 1, which is reverse. So mathematically, it's, it's completely trivial. So, um, so now we are going to refine. Okay? So, so the idea, you remember when, when we were dealing with arrays, we always had an index k moving little by little from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. We, we had that two times, for example, in the, um, in, in the sorting algorithm. So we are going to do exactly the same thing here. But um, so the idea is that, is that this part is reverse from F to P, and this part is not reversed yet. OK? And <coughs> so we have, two, we have two linear lists. We have A and we have, we have B. So P is um, at the beginning of A and also at the beginning of, of B. And the main invariant is very simple. A union B minus 1 is C minus 1. And at the end of it, when, when P is here, uh, then uh, uh, B, is, B is, um, is 0. Therefore, A is just equal to uh, B, B, sorry, not 0, empty. And so A is e exactly equal to C minus 1. OK, so, so you see the, the, what we are going to do. We are going now exactly like we progress with an index. We are going to, we are going to move one, one step here uh, by removing this from B and adding this to, to A. It's exactly plus 1. It's exactly plus 1 in an index, but we do it on, on the nodes. OK? 
So, and, and this is a description of the, of the progress that we have here. Okay, so let's do this. So, so now we have the definition of A, A and B. Um, so, so now the, the set corresponding to A is the, um, this is the uh, reflexive transitive closure operator. So on C minus one of P, union P, union, uh, sorry, I should have put the, the brackets here, minus F and, and the other direction, and then the second one. And then we have this, um, uh, this um, strong, strong invariant. So this is the definition of A, the definition of, of B, P is inside D, and, and we have this. And now we're going to progress. <coughs> so P becomes B of P. P becomes B of P, so this one, this is a new P. A of B of P is equal to, to P, so, so we, we move. And, and, and then we remove P from, from B, so, so B becomes B where we remove, um, where we remove P, okay? So we, we have moved one step. And when B is zero, then R is equal to A. Second refinement, ah, second refinement, we are going to introduce nil, um, which is a special, a special node at the end of, of the chain B, um, that, that we add to it. And we also introduce a second pointer, which is Bn of p. So, so the, the reason for this is that here you see um, b of p and b of p. So we are going to, we are going to have a, a second pointer equal to this. And b now has been, has been changed to, to Bn because we have added nil at the end of it. Um, so this is what is, what is written, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and so, so this is what we do and with, with a second pointer here. And, um, and then the, the, the final situation will be with, with a single chain, D, where we, we, cut, we cut here between, between P and Q. So we have P going in this direction and Q going into, in, in this direction. And, and so we, we, move, um, we move Q to the right. So, so that, gives us, that gives us P becomes to Q, D of Q becomes P, and Q becomes D of Q. So, so we, we move to, to the right. And we have here the initialization and here the, um, um, the reverse. And so this is this is a final classical program for uh, reversing um, for reversing a, 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 a linear list. Okay. So what what is what is strange is is that the the, the thing is is quite simple here. This these three statements, but but the mathematics behind it is is a little more complicated <laughs> uh, because we have uh, to define very very carefully. Uh, the notion of linear list, and we have to define very carefully this notion of, of progress. So my point is that many, many, many algorithms dealing with pointers um, and, and uh, have, have, uh, have these things of pointers moving, um, it's very, very frequent. For example, in the, in the show weight algorithm, which I, I will not have the time to present here, um, the, we work always with, with this kind of thing, okay? So let's change now completely to um, the final presentation of this um, uh, algorithm. So we go into um, numerical, uh, little numerical uh, algorithm. So the squaric function um, is defined on natural number. It is, um, it is an injective function. And so the inverse function does exist, um, but it's not defined for all numbers. Uh, the inverse of 16 is 4, but the in inverse of 15 is not a natural number. So we want to make, to make this total. So therefore, we define the inverse as by defect, as um, uh, with this result, r, r square is, is included into n, uh, smaller than or equal to n, and strictly smaller, and n is strictly smaller than r plus 1 squared. 
So this is the, the, the square root by defect. Um, uh, the other one would be where we change the value. So for example, the integer, integer square root of 17 is 4, because we have this. Of 16, it is 4 also. And 15, it is 3, because, because we, we have this. Okay, So this is what we want to compute. Uh, <coughs> so um, again, still, still, still the same technique. Uh, we, de we define the, the final. I just define, give the definition here on the precondition. So this is exactly this one. Um, <coughs> and then I have a progress which is anticipated and, you know, simple assignment for the other variables. And, uh, <coughs> and then, of course, it, it's, it's very, very simple. <laughs> um, uh, when n is smaller than, oh, this is, this is the, the final. And here, I just do, do this. When r plus 1 squared is smaller than or equal to n, I just increment r. And, um, and then I have the variant, which is, which is this for, for this one. And, um, and here, is a, here is the square root program. Very simple. But what is annoying in this program is that um, uh, each time we have to compute r plus 1 squared. So it could take some time. So we would like to make this a, a bit better. So we are going to do a second refinement at each step. We, want, we do not want to compute this. So we observe the following, which is very simple. r plus 1 plus 1 square is r plus 1 square plus 2r plus 3. And 2r two, and two plus 1 plus 3 is 2r plus 3 plus 2. Okay. <laughs> and so what we see here, we see 2r plus 3 two, two times here. So, and we say r plus 1 square here. So we say a is r plus 1 square and b is 2r plus 3. And, and now we have um, the, the, the nice thing is that um, uh, we have, so we have these two, and the, we, we could have this in the progress. A becomes A plus B. A was this. So you see A becomes A plus B, and uh, B becomes B plus 2, B plus 2. Okay? So here uh, we have no, um, we have no um, computation of the, of the square. And so this gives us uh, the following program. Uh, very simple. So you see, again and again, we, we start from the mathematical, little mathematical properties about uh, r plus 1 and about 2r plus 3. And, and then um, we do this. OK, so now we want to, to go further. And the idea of going further is, is, to, is this, this squaring function is, um, is an injective increasing function. Okay, it's a function like this. And we want to take the, the, the inverse. So let's, let's raise a little the problem. So more generally, we are given a total numerical function f. And the function is supposed to be strictly inject, um, increasing like this. And it is also injective, one to one. And we want to compute its inverse by defect. So exactly the, the same thing, but, but not specially for square root. And, we shall, and, and also we shall borrow some idea from the binary search development that we have seen before. OK, so let's put all this together. So this is the definition of f. It's a total function from n to n. It is strictly increasing. Um, um, uh, because it is strictly increasing and a total function, it, it can be proved as a theorem that it is surjective. It's, it's 1, 1. And, um, and then we have n, which is the, the, the value we want to, to get. Uh, <coughs> and so we take exactly the same, the same approach as for the square root. By defect, f of r smaller than or equal to n, f of, uh, small, strictly smaller than f of r plus 1, and we have some anticipation. OK, so, so the idea now, because we are going to take advantage of the fact that it is increasing, so what we are going to do is, well, suppose we are given two, to begin with, two n numbers a and b with these properties, f of a smaller than n, smaller than or equal to n, smaller than f of b plus 1. And we are, we are thus certain that the result is in the interval a, b, OK? And, and we, we exactly like for, for binary search, we are going to, re, to 
uh, make this interval narrower, narrower, narrower until the moment where we reach the final, the final. And so we introduce a constant Q, which is such that f of r smaller than or equal to n, strictly smaller than f of Q plus 1. And, and now we, <coughs> uh, this is the definition of the, of the, of the new axioms for the first refinement. And then um, <coughs> uh, here is the, the, the invariant for the refinement, okay? So we, 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 we have this, which was defined uh, here. Um, and when R is equal to Q, then this is finished. And, and now we have uh, exactly the same approach as for the binary search. We have something which is still non-deterministic non here. Um, any x such that x is in r, r plus 1q is n. If n is smaller than f of x, we do this. And if f of x is smaller than or equal to n, we do, we do this. And we have the following, uh, the following variant. And, um, <coughs> and now um, we, we reduce the non-determinacy exactly like in the binary search. Uh, Q is equal to, to this, R is equal to this, and we have these two properties here. And, <coughs> and finally, this gives us the, the program. So the program, this, this program is very general because F, A, and B are, are just um, uh, generic constants. And, and now what would be nice is to, um, is to instantiate this with F, A, and B. With, with different value. So for example, we go back to the square root. So <clears throat> in the case of, um, so here I explain what, what, what we have to do by instantiating them. We obtain some new programs almost for free, but we have to prove the property of instantiated constants because these constants have got some properties. So we have to, uh, to now give um, in, in, a new, in another more specialized framework, we have to give the properties of F, uh, to prove the property of F and the properties of A and B. So let's go back to the square root function. So F is, in, is instantiated to the squaring function. So it is increasing, it is injective. So A and B are instantiated to zero and N. So because we have, we have this, so this is, this is okay. And then we obtain the, the square root program, uh, another square root program for free. We just, we just replace um, here, uh, we just replace by, by F, and, and, and then we have, we have, uh, we have this. Um, and, and now let's do the same thing with another function, which is the, the function multiplied by M. So um, uh, A and B are instantiated again by zero, to zero and N, so because we have, we have this, and we shall obtain the integer division program, um, which is very close to, to the square root, uh, because we have, we have just changed, uh, changed this. The body here is exactly the same, and here we, we, have, changed, we have changed this. Okay, so the, this is um, this notion of instantiation. So this notion of instantiation is, is very important in event B. Um, you, 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 you have the context. In the context, you define the sets, and you define the axioms for these sets. And everything in, in, in the development is generic with regard to these sets and, and these axioms. And now, instantiating a, an entire development is to put ourselves in another development um, and, then, and then to point, to, to look at this generic one and to, um, to give um, values to the generic set it's exactly what we've done here, and give values to the constant. And of course, prove locally in our uh, smaller theory to prove that the, the, the axioms um, that we have here are mere theorem. And if we, if, we, if, we, if we succeed in doing this, then we can import completely the entire developments without redoing the proof, just changing the value of the, of the, of the set and the value of, of the constant. And this is exactly what we've done, what we've done here. This notion of, um, of, um, um, instance of um, instantiating a complete development is, is not yet fully um, 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 
implemented on the Rodin platform, but this is something we are going to do uh, quite, quite soon. Okay? <coughs> and th this is a, some sort of a, of a second di dimension. And in fact, the, the, the separation between context and machines is exactly because we had that in mind. Okay, and this is, this is a, a very well-defined uh, notion or concept or methodology in mathematics. Okay, in mathematics, you do, that, you do this all the time. You define algebra, some algebraic structure, and then in another, in another uh, theory, you, you say, ah, I recognize that I have some algebraic structure here, so I can take all uh, the, the algebraic, um, I can instantiate locally my, um, this algebraic structure, and all the theorems that have been proved here are now theorems uh, without reproving them in, um, in, my, in my other theory. So mathematicians do that all the time, all the time, all the time. And we, we want to borrow this, this idea um, uh, in uh, this notion of context and, um, and machine. Okay, this is the end of it. Um, I have no time now. I would li I'd like to develop um, the show weight algorithm, but I have, I, have, I have clearly no time to do that. Um, uh, um, Rosten has got all, all the, 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 the text, the slides, um, and so if you are interested, you could ask uh, Rosten. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. I, have, I have a question. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, the sequential programs that you've shown, You've shown them in using event B. Yeah. Um, if you did them in the in the B method, uh, your older I mean method, the, yeah. I imagine you could do some similar things. Could you say, um, would you pref I mean, if you did them now, you prefer you would prefer to do them in, in event B? Oh, definitely. And you would say why? Uh, why? Why? Because in in event B. In, in, so in classical B, there is ifs and else, and, and there are uh, loops and, and, and things like this. So in order to prove things about this, uh, you have to introduce um, a variant, an invariant, uh, for, for the loop. Uh, or you have also semicolon, and you have to, you have to prove um, uh, also the refinement of some things that are connected by semicolon. But let me give you just a simple example. Suppose you have an ifs and else. And you refine this ifs and else by an ifs and else. Um, you, you can refine this way, or you can refine it this way. Okay. So you, you have, um, in, in the refinement of the ifs and else, you have four proofs, but two of them are, are not very <laughs> interesting. Only two of them are interesting. Now, generalize, and this is also possible in classical B, generalize the, the ifs and else to a case. So suppose you have a case with 10 cases. You refine with 10 cases, 100 proofs, only 10 are, are important. And, and uh, this is the same with, with semicolon. When we, you have semicolon, if you apply uh, whole um, rules, you have to introduce um, assertions in between the semicolon. So you have to, fi to find them. And um, it, it, it generates very, very big proofs. Okay. So all this, after years and years and years, I, I didn't like these big proofs for things that are simple. So, so gradually, it gives us a definition. What is the essence? So the essence of all these things are transition, ju just events. So we, we cut things, and, and then, of course, we want to do some sequential programs, and, and then we merge. Okay. So, so it is possible, and people are doing it um, in, in classical B, but I, I definitely prefer, <coughs> uh, prefer the, the approach of even B. Now, the problem is that even that classical B is, is widely used in industry. Um, in, in the train industry, there are many, many trains now. In, uh, I don't know in the United States, maybe some in the United States, but certainly in China, in Argentina, in, in many countries in Europe. Um, so uh, there, uh, there is some, some B inside it. And the, the most the largest one is, I think, the, the shuttle in Charles de Gaulle Airport. It's, it's about 150,000 lines of code, entirely generated from, from classical, classical B. And the number of proofs for this is, a, is, a, is about um, 30 or 40,000 proofs, okay. among which um, I think 10% have to be done um, uh, manually. Okay. 
um, and the, 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 the people suffer a bit um, in, in doing this. Also, one of the problems with classical B is that the, the system study at, at the top is, is not done formally. Okay, so if there is an error there, the error will be uh, again in, 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 in the development. So the idea, so, so uh, apart, apart from this, so we had all this idea about even B, also the strong influence of action system and, and, and other people. So little by little, we, we, developed, um, we developed even B. And so, of course, people say, but, um, but then you have classical B and even B, and, and um, well, is there a, a connection between the two? Yes, there is a connection. And, and the idea is precisely the following. You, you define the even B at a system level um, until you reach a point where you have taken, you remember all the requirements, and then, and, and then you, can, you, can, you can jump into classical B. Uh, the, the idea is to, is to change the, um, the events into little procedures and, and then or, or do some aggregation as I've done here. So there are various ways to, to, to jump into, into classical B. Um, also, what we are thinking, I've been speaking uh, to you um, some days ago, we are, we are also thinking of incorporating some code generation directly at the level, at the level of event B, for example, doing things like this, um, and also developing directly from events, from an event system, developing directly some, some codes. And, um, and this is work in progress at the, at the present time. So sorry for this long answer to your, que to your que question. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>